Hmm? A Darwin Award is given to those who remove themselves from the gene pool in the dumbest ways possible. For example, taking a selfie with a wild animal, poking a bear, or reading this on a train track. But humans aren't the only animals that have earned these awards. The fossil record is full of prehistoric animals that died in the most brutal, unlucky, and downright stupid ways. But it's exactly these kind of deaths that let us witness behavior from animals we'd otherwise know almost nothing about. Take these two for example. Dinosaurs so stubborn they wouldn't stop fighting even after they'd been buried alive. On one side, Protoceratops, a sheep-sized relative of Triceratops with a beak strong enough to slice your hand clean off. On the other, Velociraptor, a turkey-sized predator armed with a sharp curved sickle claw. And what we're left with is one of the most dynamic fossils ever found. The moment of a battle to the death. With Protoceratops biting down so hard, it may have shattered the raptor's arm, if not bite it off entirely. Meanwhile, the Velociraptor is driving its claw straight into the Protoceratops' neck. Now, this is one of the only times we've seen active predation in the fossil record, but what it suggests is even crazier. Because Velociraptor was tiny compared to Protoceratops, so is this just a desperate gamble for food? Or could it be evidence of pack hunting gone horribly wrong? Either way, the result the first dinosaurs we can confidently say had that dog in them. But somehow this wasn't the only fossil that captured the exact second an animal made the worst possible decision of its life. Except this time, it wasn't dinosaurs. You've probably heard the line, there's always a bigger fish. Though I bet you didn't know, we have a fossil that literally proves it. But first, we're gonna need to talk about pterosaurs. These were the flying reptiles that ruled the skies through much of the Mesozoic. They weren't dinosaurs, but their roots actually go back to the Triassic with these little almost dinosaur looking things. And then they exploded into every shape and size imaginable. Some were insect hunters with wingspans shorter than your arm. Others like Quetzalcoatlus were giraffe sized giants that could probably swallow you whole. But many pterosaurs hunted fish, skimming over lakes or diving near the surface of the ocean to snap up prey. And that's exactly what one was doing 150 million years ago. This was Rampharynchus, an animal perfectly adapted for that fishing lifestyle, as its teeth were designed to grab up even the most slippery of prey. Except this fishing trip didn't end the way it was supposed to. This fossil shows the pterosaur swooping down, grabbing a fish, and legitimately mid-swallow, a long spear-snouted fish, a spitorhynchus, drove its jaws straight through the pterosaur's wing, dragging both animals underwater. But the dumbest part of the whole thing? The fish was just way too small to actually be hunting the pterosaur. So this wasn't even a real predation attempt. It just saw some movement, then its instincts kicked in and made a split second decision that got fossilized for eternity. And this wasn't just some freak accident either. Paleontologists have actually found a few other fossils of the exact same thing. Altogether, it comes up as one of the dumbest food chain fossils ever. A fish in a pterosaur, and a pterosaur in a fish. But not every prehistoric animal went out in dumb ways. Some of them live lives so brutal it's a miracle they lasted as long as they did. Case in point, T-Rex. Everyone knows how insane they were, but I still don't think you fully get the absurdity of it. Take Sue. It's one of the biggest and most complete T-Rex ever found. Her bones are basically a medical record preserved in stone. You've got broken ribs, a leg bone so infected it swelled to twice its normal size, and mysterious holes in her jaw. And yet, she survived it all, long enough to develop arthritis in her spine. In other words, Sue didn't just recover from injuries that would kill most animals. She pushed all the way into old age. And then there's Stan. If Sue is proof T-Rex could take a beating, Stan is proof they could take it from each other. A single adult is estimated to have had around 40 square miles of land just for itself. That's larger than the entire island of Manhattan or about the size of San Francisco, which meant most of the time, these giant predators stayed pretty spread out. But when two occasionally crossed paths, things got bloody. Stan's skull and neck are peppered with healed puncture marks that exactly match T-Rex teeth. One bite went straight through the back of his head, literally into the brain case itself. Now for any animal that wasn't a T-Rex, that probably would mean death. But Stan's wounds, they healed. But being an apex predator doesn't always make you untouchable, especially in places like the Morrison Formation, because this is where Allosaurus lived. This was the most dominant carnivore in its ecosystem. It measured around 30 feet long and over two tons. 
If it existed today, it would be by far the largest land predator on Earth. And yet, every time an Allosaurus went to hunt, it was basically gambling with its life. As a Morrison was one of those rare ecosystems in Earth's history where the prey could be far deadlier than the predators. Diplodocus carried a tail alone that stretched over 40 feet long and could hit you with enough force to snap any bone. And then there was Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus had what may have been the most dangerous weapon in the history of animals, the Thagmizer. Four spikes on the end of its tail, each the size of a sword, swung with enough power to drive clean through you. And Allosaurus knew this firsthand, because we've got a fossil of one that picked a fight with Stegosaurus and lost. One swing of that tail sent a spike straight through its pelvis, breaking bone and leaving an infection that ended up killing it. That's the reality of living in a world where dinner could kill you right back. And even knowing all of that, Allosaurus kept going after them, because we found a Stegosaurus backplate with a crescent-shaped bite mark that near perfectly matches in Allosaurus' jaw. Still, not everything in the fossil record is a clash of titans. Sometimes, it's a single step. Fossilized trackways are snapshots in stone capturing the exact moment of a dinosaur's foot pressed into the ground. Some show herds moving together, others catch predators stalking prey. We've even found footprints from millions of years before the dinosaurs, like the trails of giant millipedes winding across ancient beaches. But sometimes, the tracks don't just record the step, they record the victim underneath it. In the late Jurassic of Switzerland, a dwarf sauropod was wandering across a mudflat, leaving behind its footprints, and right in its path, a turtle that picked the worst resting spot in history. The result? One flattened turtle preserved for 150 million years which also makes it the earliest confirmed case of roadkill. And now one of the most ridiculous fossilized deaths ever recorded. An ichthyosaur killed by the very thing it had already eaten. Ichthyosaurs were dolphin-shaped marine reptiles that ruled the ocean for over 150 million years. This one lived during the Triassic and was about the size of a great white. But when people picture ancient oceans, they usually only imagine just a few names. Ichthyosaurs, Mosasaurs, and Plesiosaurs. But the Triassic Seas were a lot messier than that, as they were packed with all sorts of reptilian evolutionary experiments. There were the Nothosaurs, that lived half on land and half in the sea. They were basically the Triassic version of seals. There were the Placodons, which despite the giant shell, weren't closely related to turtles at all. And then, there were the Thalatosaurs. They were long, slim coastal reptiles that could grow up to 13 feet long. For a while, all these animals shared the ocean, but ichthyosaurs were by far the most dominant, with some species reaching close to 50 feet long. So when they hunted, the size difference usually wasn't even close. But that's not what this fossil shows. Instead, it's a 15-foot ichthyosaur attempting to swallow an entire 13-foot thalatosaur in a single bite. So a predator barely longer than its prey, trying to down it in one go, which turned out to be a terrible idea since the ichthyosaur choked and died with the thalatosaur still lodged in its body. Greedy bastard. Now speaking of greed, if you guys want to support the channel in more videos like this, go watch this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Jehona out.